Hey guys and girls and welcome to the third tutorial now in this series of tutorials and what today we're going to be seeing is um, using these external libraries I talked about to make programming a bit easier and a bit more beginner friendly so the first thing we have to use is download these libraries and you can download them from uh, the website address jtf.acm.org um, and the file you want to download is called acm.yar so I'll write this stuff in the double do below and once you have downloaded acm.jar it's um, practically at the top of the page when you get to jtf.acm.org so when you've downloaded that you want to right click your project and go to properties I know you can see this but uh, trust me it's just um, below restore from local history so when you go to project to properties, you go to Yapa Build Path, and go to Libraries, and you add an external jar, and then you want to find your um, jar file. So I'm just going to go to my downloads and choose acm.jar from um, from the folder basically. If you saved it somewhere else apart from downloads, then you go to that location and select acm.jar. So you open it and you press OK. So once you've done that, you can see that a new thing here called References Libraries appears, and this is acm.jar. So basically now we can start using these libraries. And what these libraries have are um, classes, just like this main class here, which have code we can use, and this code makes um, programming much, uh, much beginner friendly, basically, much more direct. Uh, than the previous type of programming we've seen. So basically the first thing we have to do is we're going to create a, a text console program. So the first thing we have to do is extend console program. Now what does this mean? Basically what we're telling our main class is that it's going to inherit all of the properties of this other class. So the extends keyword tells this class to the left that it has all of the properties of the console program class or whatever class you put after this. Um, so now this is interesting because if this console program ha uh, class has any methods then our main class has those methods. If the console program uh, class has any variables then our main class has those variables. So basically now that our main class is empty it is just a copy of console program class it doesn't have anything new it just has everything console program has if we now add stuff to our main class we are um, not changing console program class we're just creating a new class which has everything console program has and more so basically the extends keyword allows us to create an inheritance system where uh, the classes which are below other classes so in this case main is below console program have added functionality for example, we could have a student class, and then we could have a frosh class, for example, which extended from student. So a student would have, for example, a student ID, and then frosh would have uh, a different property um, from student, and then we would have other types of students. So, for example, um, college students and that sort of stuff. I don't know much about um, American student types, so you pardon me hopefully um, so basically that's it now our main class has all of the functionality of the console program class but first of all we have to tell our program where console program class is so um, where it is located so that we can access it and we do that by importing console program so now we've pressed that and we import acm.program.console program and notice that the first thing is ACM which is the name of our library and then it's program which is a folder inside ACM and then console program is a file inside program now um, now we've done this we can actually start uh, programming using this external library so the first thing we want to do is write public void run And now, before we had the main method, which is public static void main string args, and now we just have a simple public void run. 
and this is exactly the same thing. When you press play, then uh, this method will get executed and we will run everything inside these curly braces. A bit more straightforward. And now instead of having to write system.out.println, we just have to write println. And now if we press play, you'll see something a bit different than before. Now a new window appears and it says upload viewer main dot class and then sub program for those of you who don't know Spanish uh, sub program and then here appears the sub program and here it says sub program started and the sub program merely shows the words hello world that's because um, we only told it to we can do much more interesting stuff such as user input with this sub program and um, don't worry about this um, red stuff uh, it, isn't, it isn't really important for the moment um, so yeah upload viewer what did that mean well basically every time we extend the console program or graphics program or even program we're creating an applet and what an applet is is just a Java program which can be uploaded to a web server and ran directly from a web browser. So we could upload this simple program to the web and then we could access it from a web browser. Of course it wouldn't be too interesting to only see the words hello world in the screen um, but yeah it's possible and when we create more advanced programs we will always be able to upload them to the internet. So that's something interesting to have to take into account basically. And uh, now that it's simpler, we can write, instead of hello world, we can write something like <clears throat> enter your username. Now this is starting to look interesting. And now we can create a new variable. I'm going to create a string variable. And what this variable is going to hold is whatever the user writes into the text um, console. So, um, input name equals and now here comes the um, extravaganza the, the interesting stuff read line and that's it so this is not a, a really good way to do it uh, but it's a possible way and um, so in this case we would print enter your username and then uh, we would assign um, to the variable input name whatever the user um, types into the screen and when the user presses enter we would stop reading uh, the text and we would assign uh, all the text the user wrote until the enter to input name. So this is very nice but instead of doing this we can directly type our question into read line just like so. So we're assigned to input name this uh, the value returned by read line, and this is what the user types in. And before uh, allowing the user to type anything, we write enter your username. Okay, uh, so uh, I'm just going to uh, write something simple to check for if the username equals um, I don't know something. So if input name. don't worry too much about what I'm doing here, I'm just uh, writing it so that you can see if we wrote the correct thing and it works or not. So basically here's a program, it says enter your username and I'm gonna write um, and it says you're out. So that's very sad, now let's run again and see what happens. Here's a program and I'm gonna type something and there we go, we're in. So you saw we assigned what we wrote to uh, input name and then if input name equals something we print we're in and if not we print we're out. 
you can read through this entire understand it but in the next lesson i'll actually go over it a bit more so i'm running out of time and um, so i'll see you guys next time remember to subscribe